So, women. It's not really about strong women characters or about slut-shaming. It's about, for me, consistency. Angie talked about whether or not people have a problem with Renette, for example, because she was a courtesan and because she got to make out with Ten. My problem with Girl in the Fireplace is not with Renette. I actually think that Renette is a really powerful, dynamic, and interesting character played brilliantly by Sophia Miles, and that has nothing to do with the fact that I have a massive girl crush on Sophia Miles. My problem with Girl in the Plot Fireplace is what Ten does, because he acts very out of character for him. And so does Rose. Um, Rose nags the doctor and he says you sound just like your mother and we're supposed to laugh there but it's hard to laugh there because it's just not true and it's not where they're supposed to be in their relationship and it just it's baffling. He abandons Rose and Mickey to jump through a mirror to save Renette and that's not consistent with Russell's Doctor Who and it is consistent with how Stephen Moffat writes the Doctor. And I'll get to that later but my problem with Renette it doesn't exist. And the same is true of Amy. I don't care that she wears short skirts. I don't care that she's a chrysogram. I, I don't mind that she's flirty. It's a problem with consistency. And also with infidelity. But this I feel like this video is going to jump all over the place. You're going to have to bear with me. I just have a lot of feelings. I don't like inconsistency and I don't like infidelity. And those things come up all the time, kind of, with Stephen Moffat's Doctor Who. Amy runs away with the doctor on her uh, the night before her wedding, and in her shoes, you'd do it too. She has massive issues with trust and with abandonment and with love in general, and I understand that, but with Russell's Doctor Who, you always knew what you were supposed to think. He told you what you were supposed to think. You didn't have to believe him and you didn't have to like it, but you knew. You knew what you could and could not do with time, and you knew what you could and could not do with characters. When a character did something bad, you knew it was bad. It was portrayed as a bad thing. When a character did something good, you knew it was good and it was portrayed as a good thing. That sort of um, meta isn't really available to us in Moffat's Doctor Who. So when Amy makes out with Eleven at the end of the Angel Two-Parter, it's a testament to Karen's acting ability and to my belief in her character's brokenness that that doesn't offend me and squick me out as someone who does not ship them together because she's engaged to someone else, first of all, and you're not sure if you're supposed to laugh at how hilarious it is or if you're supposed to cry at how upsetting it is that Amy thinks she has to go there or if you're supposed to ship it. I don't. Eleven treats her, the doctor, <laughs> treats her as if she were a, a daughter. With Eleven you see a lot of, of, of forehead kissing and a lot of hugging and a lot of don't go there young lady. He's very much a dad and I don't want to see someone make out with their dad. That's not cool with me. And, and another great instance of whether or not you don't know how you're supposed to feel is River Song and she makes a Dalek beg for mercy. I thought that was a really powerful, really amazing moment in Doctor Who because it made me scared. River Song is the kind of person who, he, you know, the Dalek was like, well, you're a companion to the Doctor, you'll, you'll show me mercy, they always do, and she said, look again, and then she makes it beg for mercy. She makes a Dalek beg. And that's, to me, terrifying. Yes, it makes her awesome and badass and a head bitch in charge, and I think that's really great. I love River's character, but I love her because I find her intimidating, and I find her a little bit mysterious, a little bit scary. I don't trust her. And I don't know if I'm supposed to. I'm not sure if he's he wants me to cheer and think that that's awesome and, and just d disregard the fact that that's not c really a thing that's okay. And with River Song in general, I was not always a fan, and w a fantastic testament to Stephen Moffat's writing is the fact that he turned me into a River Song fan. But part of the reason that that happened is because she became a character of action and not just a character of talk. And it's also because you don't really know where you stand with her. River brings a lot of really interesting things to the table in her relationship with the Doctor. She'll shoot a gun when he won't, and she can pilot the TARDIS when, when he can't. And that's something you kind of want on your team TARDIS. Is that the kind of person the Doctor could fall in love with? Maybe. I'm getting to a place where I will be open to that. <laughs> and I'm curious to see where it goes, but I still can't get away from the fact that this is something that Stephen Moffat is writing. Here's another quotation from Mr. Moffat. This is from Doctor Who magazine number 385. They're talking about Girl in the Fireplace. Given that this episode was The Doctor in Love, were you worried, Stephen, that you might be undermined by the Doctor Rose love story? And Moffat responds. In the first series, there's really very little 
Doctor and Rose in love. The first real display of it is the why do you assume I don't dance bit in The Doctor Dances. It's really the only towards the end of that series that Rose stops popping out of the TARDIS looking for the first available male. Until then she regards herself as absolutely available. And the Doctor and Rose are not in a relationship. They're not doing the one thing that distinguishes a relationship from a close friendship. There's nothing wrong with him having an infatuation with someone else. And anyway, who says that the Doctor would have a problem with having two girlfriends? When people ask, how could the Doctor love Renette when he already loved Rose? I just say, have you met a man? No problem. Ugh. <sighs> Mr. Moffat, we do not agree. The fact that sex would be the only thing that distinguishes a relationship from a close friendship, I do not agree. The fact that it, polygamy is something that every man it should be okay with and isn't that badass, I do not agree. I do not agree, sir. I'm sorry. Remember how I said this was all going to be positive discourse? Uh, I'm struggling. This all seems a lot more negative out loud than it does when I wrote it down. But this is, this is my personal view about Stephen Moffat. And ultimately, Moffat and Rusty write the Doctor very differently. And uh, as someone who craves and searches for consistency, I have a big issue with that. Stephen's Doctor is very impulsive. He's the kind of person who would jump through a mirror on a horse in order to save someone he just met and leave behind the people who's he, who he's been traveling with for years. That's very consistent with how Eleven acts in series five and how he acts in the Christmas special, but that's not really consistent with how Russell wrote him and that bugged me. Russell's Doctor, uh, 10 and, and 9, were very deliberate. Should I be allowed to do this? Is this okay? Can I kill the Daleks if it means I'm going to wipe out half of the world? Can I save Pompeii? <laughs> It was very much about what you can and cannot do, who you can and cannot save, what time won't, will and will not allow, what makes time break. Uh, can I save this group of people from Mars? And in Stephen's Doctor Who, there's no one you can't save. And it's funny that I say that like it's a bad thing, because you'd want to be able to save everyone, but in life, you can't. And we use our media as a way of interpreting our world, and no one is infallible, including the Doctor. And when you start to portray him that way, I get very nervous. And this is something that we see in Classic Who as well. The, the fourth Doctor has a whole plotline about, you know, can he go back to when Davros created the Daleks and just wipe them out then? And ultimately he doesn't, because that's something that time will not be able to bounce back from. And that sort of deliberation and questioning of moral authority. I'm the doctor and there is no Hari authority, says Ten, but Ten doesn't really believe that. And Eleven kind of does. He doesn't say it. He'd never say it. He's too modest for that. But that's how he's written. And on that note, there's a really troubling disconnect between what we are told about the doctor and what we are shown about the doctor, because what we are shown is that Moffat's Doctor, the 11th Doctor, does not get romantic love. He will watch Amy and Rory make out, or Kazran and Abigail make out, and he'll be like, why are you doing that? What do you... I don't understand. Are you breathing out your ears? This is so goofy and wacky and fun. Oh, by the way, let me go marry Marilyn Monroe and boink Elizabeth I and make out with Renette. The Doctor cannot be both an intergalactic playboy and this adorable little Muppet man who doesn't understand human emotion. You can't have it both ways. It's very easy to get infatuated with the idea of the Doctor as someone who could romance anyone from any era, and in interviews Moffat says that he, does, he doesn't care about that, and yet you see the legacy that he crafts for the Doctor on his show, and that doesn't really line up. And so we're back to the same complaint that I've been having so far, consistency, 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 consistency.